there is considerable interaction between animals and the intensity of predation. Over the millennia, the animals invent new strategies for survival or capture. Camouflage is the most sophisticated form, where the creature attempts to blend in with the surroundings on account of its appearance, movements, or color. A crab carries an entire sea urchin in order to hide and to put off its predators. Other monsters lie in wait in the sand and only keep one eye above the surface. The king of camouflage is undoubtedly the octopus. It can change color at any time by simple contraction and relaxation of its pigmented cells, the chromatophores. It confuses its enemy and allows it to swoop down on its prey. Its meter-long tentacles crush the large crab in a few minutes, and then its sharp beak tears it apart. The octopus also has enemies, and they know when to surprise it. Today, this female octopus is building her nest to lay her eggs. As she has no bones, she can adopt any form and can slither into the smallest of holes. There she protects herself from predators by blocking up the hole with stones. Here she lays between 100,000 and 400,000 eggs and hangs them for two months in cocoons no larger than grains of rice. She carefully ventilates them by fanning a current of water around them until they hatch. While she's taking care of her future offspring, she stops feeding for two months and will therefore die as soon as they are born. But after 30 days, the water has suddenly got colder. This will delay the hatching of the eggs. The female is weakening fast. Will she live long enough to look after her eggs until they hatch? Driven by necessity, she makes the mistake of leaving her den to look for food. Her neighbors, the moray eels, which usually distrust her, sense that the balance of power has changed. octopus's ink does not succeed in dissuading its predators. The moray eels do pirouettes, rather like crocodiles do, to tear off meat. final struggles of a mother who wanted another month of life to ensure the survival of her babies.
female dies in one last cloud of ink. Her death means the death of all her eggs, which will dry out for lack of care. It's the time of the truth, a time when the prey cleans the teeth of the predator, who badly needs it. All forms of life happily participate in this symbiotic relationship. No nook or cranny is spared, even the most risky. Some fish are more cautious and don't entrust their flanks to others. They rid themselves of their parasites using a stone until it becomes too smooth. Or they use the coarse skin of the coral shark for their grooming. The coral shark has a problem. It is not quick and agile enough to catch a healthy fish. It therefore depends on the preparatory work of other fish. These hound an octopus and wound it. The meal is ready, and the coral shark only has to help itself. A relationship of service is also established between the coral shark and the jack. The jack sets about hunting. It attacks and wounds an ailing creole fish. The creole fish shelters in a cavity. The whole population of the reef comes rushing in for the kill. But the sharks drive all the other creatures away and fight over the prey. It's every shark for itself. It's a matter of seeing who will be most adept at working its way into the rock crevice. And then it's siesta time, some lying on top of others like lions, but mine is the affection. Leopard rays hunt under the very eyes of their predators, but they have nothing to fear from the hammerhead sharks as long as they're not diseased or wounded. They scan the floor with their nose, which is designed to detect crabs, shells and mollusks. They dig to unearth them and take in sand at the same time. Despite their powerful jaws, they sometimes have difficulty grinding shells that are too thick. And soon the schools of leopard rays will cover the sea, like so many stars carpeting the sky. It's time for the killer whale to try its luck. This mammal reigns supreme at another summit of the food pyramid. It's the nightmare of the rays, because unlike the sharks which only hunt at night, it's active day and night and needs to feed more often than sharks. It harasses the rays until they become exhausted and zeroes in on the weakest. In the deep, night quickly takes hold. Among the debris of naval battles, another battle is played out. Oocytes, plankton and worms in all shapes and forms bustle about, grow and transform. Schools of young sardines begin to come together gradually forming enormous shoals. An army of cuttlefish moves into line and maneuvers to surprise them.
cuttlefish has two tentacles and eight arms. It launches its two tentacles like harpoons and stores its prey using the suckers covering its arms. Sharks are also present. At night, the sea belongs to them. They're on the prowl to satisfy their appetite. All their prey know it, and they all lie low. to hide, for they are toxic and their stings are poisonous. The sharks spread fear, track down hiding places and hound those fish that panic. This fish has hidden itself well, but it's disturbed by a lobster. Its movements attract the attention of the pack. The red fish ends up being caught. A parrotfish looks for a refuge. Will a mere crevice be enough to protect it from the relentless sharks? fish captured by the most skillful causes of frenzy. The sharks lose all their inhibitions and turn on each other. It's along the coasts of Chile and South Africa that the food chain appears in all its splendor. Cold currents trapped between the coasts and the continental shelf travel northwards where they mix with the warm waters. This cold current is rich in plankton and attracts schools of pelagic fish, such as sardines, which use it as their stable diet. Enormous shoals of sardines are formed, covering several hundred kilometers, and are driven by the cold current surging up the coasts toward the warm waters where they will breed. They haven't got there yet. Their journey will turn into a genuine obstacle course. All the sea's predators will be converging on them, starting with the schools of jacks, whose equivalent on dry land are packs of wild dogs. Jacks are very ambitious when they're hungry. Their upper jaw contains an extra row of formidable canine teeth. They depend on their visual acuity, and so can only hunt during the day. The jacks start by forming a wall on one side, then a second wall on the other side. They channel the long ribbon of sardines, pushing the shoal to make it more compact. Then they divide it into sections. The sardines close ranks squeezing up against each other. Finally, the jacks isolate a group, pursue it, and drive it towards the surface. Then they proceed to attack. The first of the many feeding frenzies that the sardines will suffer is beginning.
sea is suddenly awash with millions of scales and pieces of flesh. These attract manta rays, which devour the particles. Then, when the jack's frenzy has died down, larger though no less voracious fish take over. The wounded or dead sardines fall through the water at a breathtaking speed, but will not have time to reach the ocean bed. <laughs> 